The Chicago Bulls have announced that they will be doing training camp in Nashville, Tennessee. It might be a good thing, but I don't know. And then we got to go ahead and talk about two guys who ranked in the top 10 of FIBA play, according to Hoops Hype. Y'all know we're going to talk about it, but you know you got to hear the music first. Come on, yeah. Gang. Bulls podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm with my dog C Dub. How you doing, boy? I'm feeling great, man. What's to it? Let's get to it, man. If y'all like what y'all listening to today, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so every time we drop, you be one of the first ones to know. Now, earlier, yes, in the evening, yesterday evening, the Chicago Bulls released C Dub that they will be having one week of training camp hosted in Nashville, Tennessee. I think it's a pretty good idea. Just a little small thing to better the team. How you feeling about the whole you did? I see the uh, point, uh, less distractions. Um, a lot. It's a team building move for sure. Uh, they won't, They probably got a lot of scheduled events for the team to, for everybody to, to have some male bonding. If you want to say it that way, you know what I'm saying? I, I ain't mad at it. It's good. And then you come back for, I guess, for the rest of training camp. So I think it's a good move. It's a good move. It's a good I, move. It ain't nothing that's going to blow me away. Like, oh, my God, they're going to Nashville. They can go to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But, I, you know, <laughs> it's cool. It's or definitely, the country. Yeah, I don't think it's something that's too crazy. But I think it's definitely a good move simply because, man, you're going to, to me, everybody know this season is crucial. For what's about to happen for the Chicago Bulls heading into next season. You know what I'm saying? So I think that these guys get an opportunity to not be in the big city of Chicago to where everybody after practice, they just go home and do their own thing. This allows the guys the opportunity to come together, probably go out, eat some dinner, go get a massage, go watch the equalizer, something like that. You know what I'm saying? As a team, do, do things as a team so you can get the know one another, gel a little bit more, and hopefully we do something better than what the word continuity has meant for us these past few seasons, bro. Uh, is that is that coming from the front office, Billy Donovan, or the captains of the team? That would be interesting to know because if it's uh, coming from uh, Billy Donovan or the front office, for either one, you could tell about that's des it's a desperation move to get everybody to bond to let everybody know how crucial this year is together. You think it's desperation? Why you said that? Oh, this is a desperation. No, the, the move is not desperate, but I think that it's they want to get together. I want they, I want they, uh, they want to drill that in the whole team's head that um, this is a, a crucial year. This is do or die. This is a desperate year for us. Oh, okay, so I, I guess you, you know you know what I'm saying. So yeah, uh, I I would love to know who who you know who said who. Uh... Daniel Greenberg reported this, and I, no, I guess this is according to the front office that has been placed. Oh, but it's office. it's definitely been scheduled that these guys gonna be in Nashville, and I I agree with you on that desperation type thing. I definitely believe that this is do or die for a lot of players on the Chicago Bulls team because you cannot, you cannot. We said this going into this. You can't run this thing back. They ran it back again, C-Dub, but added two players and said it's a different team. <laughs> but, oh, bro. But you oh, cannot bro. do this four years in a row, bro. You cannot absolutely do this four years in a row, bro. And you I cannot. think and I think uh, most of the Bulls nation felt this way last year. Uh, now I think the team and – whoever surrounding the Bulls organization is starting to feel that idea, that logic, like, Joe, we can't keep doing this. This is do or die right here. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? They might be thinking like, Joe, we got to get come together bond. We got to give ourselves every opportunity to be successful this year. Let's all come together, come together and train the camp and get all on the same, on the same accord, bro. So I like the move. I like, I'll tell you what's the best thing about this training camp right now. No major injuries. Knock on wood. We're going to knock on wood. 
No mm -hmm. major injuries right now. Everybody coming in healthy. Everybody should be coming in. Rose, in my opinion, Rose to whoever it is, need to be defined right away. Who's the starting point guard? Or go ahead and say it's an open competition. But let it be known immediately. Don't beat around the bush. Don't, don't pussyfoot with this. Get it out the way. That's the number one thing that's going to be hovering over the bull's head going into training camp. Who's your starting point guard? So answer that right away. Don't go ahead and give us this. Uh, we just want to go ahead and just and, and, and just run a few scrimmages <laughs> and then we'll figure it out. No, say this nah. either say either this is an open competition or name a starter. Period. Don't yeah. play around with this. Yeah, and that's a great point, nephew. I think that'll hurt both players if you if you uh pussyfoot around, like you said. Uh, that'll hurt both <laughs> players. So, like I think both of them will come to compete. Maybe right. Javon Carter thinks he's coming in and he got the starting position. But I know Kobe, he thinking to himself, like, I'm competing for the, for the starting point guard position. Right. And Javon, he's good enough to compete for the starting point guard position. Hey, Ayo Dusumu is competing for the starting first, for the starting point guard position. If y'all don't want to say it, I'm going to say it. Ayo competing for the starting point guard position, bro. Facts. I ain't mad at that either, though. I ain't mad at that either. But I do want to get your thoughts. What uh, uh, Everybody heard my take on... Uh, a role being defined by Ayodo Sumu on yesterday's uh daily episode to where I pretty much said to fill those who didn't watch it, to fill y'all in real quick before we move on, I pretty much said that Ayodo Sumu, in my belief, he's going to be coming off the bench as early predictions. It's just an early prediction. And the, what, what I think that Ayodo Sumu needs to go ahead and do, he needs to be consistent in whatever he's going to do. He needs to be decisive. He needs to decide. I think he's much more than a 3 D type of guy. But yeah. I do think that he needs to define his role. And I also think he needs to add a little bit more to the bag. Is you going to be more consistent on a three-point shot? Are you going to be a guy that can run pick and roll? When you don't have the ball, are you going to be a slasher? Are you going to be a cutter? Are you going to be a guy that can do a little bit more than what you have done the last two seasons? So in your opinion, what role do you see Ayo Dosumu in and what does he have to do just to give people those thoughts? I agree with you, nephew. You made it. I, I checked that uh, episode out. You did a great job, by the way. Um, Ayo Dosumu just need to play basketball. He's a basketball player. He's been playing basketball all his life. It comes down to confidence and knowing that you can be successful at what you do on the court. I'm not going to define your game as a 3 and D player because you're more than that. Yep. Uh, you can handle the ball. You can shoot at the mid-range. We've seen you in the open court. You can shoot the three, even though you fell off in the second year. We've seen the first year. You shot 37%. So just play basketball, Ayo. What the hell happened to you? I don't know what the hell happened to you last year. <laughs> For real. You blew but, the hell hey. <laughs> but, hey, let us know down below how y'all feeling about the Chicago Bulls having training camp in Nashville, Tennessee. And go ahead and chime in on what role do you think Ayodo Sumu should have or could have with the Chicago Bulls as we edge closer and closer to the start of training camp and the regular season. Let us know below so we can chop it up. Now, C-Dub, before we go, we talked about Hoops Hype and their global ratings of the top FIBA players. Two Chicago Bulls made that list. Garlic. I mean, oh, Carlic. Like Carlick. Carlick Jones. <laughs> Carlick Jones came in at number four. Uh -huh. And Nikola Vucevic came in at 10. Wow. That's in all of the best players in the world in this tournament right now that we've been enjoying on the side. Yeah, for sure. How you uh, feeling about these two guys being ranked in the top 10? Hey, Vooch is... He's, He's always been one of the best international players in the world. I don't, that don't mean he's the top 10 players in the world, the top 10 players in the world playing in the NBA. Uh, but Carly Jones, man, you got to just – you got to be impressed with this kid. He just made MVP in the G League last, last year. Uh, every time I watch him, he, he just impresses me. I don't know how he do it. He could do absolutely everything on the court. I think he'll be successful in the NBA, nephew. Somebody's going to give him a chance. I don't know if it's going to be the Chicago Bulls. But this kid can play the ball, the basket at a high level. He can play basketball, bro. Right. So, 
I'm proud of both of them guys. Vooch has always been one of the best players in the in the world. But Carly Jones, bro, what he he gonna make a, a one city. I don't think it's gonna be Chicago, but he gonna make some team happy, bro. He gonna make a team happy. Either that's coming off the bench or starting. But he's gonna he gonna be a player in this league. Absolutely. He definitely will have his opportunities. First, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to Nikola Vucevic. To me, this is big. And to me, I don't know about y'all. He look a little slimmer, just a little slimmer. You think he so, look man? a little more, little more swifter and faster. You know, little, you okay. know, little slick. You know what I'm saying? Just a little bit. It ain't too crazy to where I'm gonna overreact. But I gotta give my man his props for going out there and doing what he's doing. You gotta show love to a guy that's going out there doing what he's doing and putting on for his country and showing love mm. and playing in this tournament full of all a lot of good and great players for sure. Yes. Now I want to talk about Carlick Jones. You know what I'm saying? We joke around, so call him garlic. It's just a little fun. But Carlick Jones, you know what I'm saying? You let you mention all his accolades, but I like to talk about South Sudan. South Sudan is completely funded by former Chicago Bull, Luol oh. Dang. And yeah. these guys, a lot of these guys on this team, you know what I'm saying? The players on this team, they have lost family members due to civil war. Yeah. Civil war that have been going on over five, six, seven plus years in their respective country. Yeah. So I got to show love to these guys for breathing life back into themselves and into their country yeah. to say that you can make it out and become something better. So Carly Jones, you get a big ass thumbs up for me. No, I'm just <laughs> but much love to you, man, because it's definitely a tall task to where you got to put on for a whole country let alone right. yourself that's a tall task all right that was well said nephew uh that definitely a great thing what luau ding is doing for his country uh we support africa you know that's that's you know we ain't got nothing, nothing else to say i ain't got nothing else to say about that i'm gonna support africa and always peace and always in, in any circumstance i support peace uh so that's a great thing what Carlick Jones is doing, Garlic and Luau Dang. I appreciate both of those guys, bro. For real. Definitely appreciate it, man, because he he been he has some games for himself and was able to go out and do some things and and grab the attention that he deserves. And I'm with you on that. I don't know if that opportunity comes with the Chicago Bulls, but if he's given an opportunity, I believe that he can come out and make a name for himself. He's an undersized guard, but that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. He can don't be, mean not, but he's six feet. He can play point guard. Yeah, he can still have an impact somewhere on somebody's team. That's the whole point. So. You know, he an old school point guard, nephew. He old, kind of old school. But he can do everything. He shoot the three. He yeah. get to the basket. He's just small, but he know how to finish over the bigs. That's how you know he a basketball player, because he can still shoot it over the seven-footers and go to the paint and shoot over six-foot, nine people. It, he's a basketball player. He's going to make a team happy. Facts. Those are the fearless guards that you want on your team. You want fearless guards on your team, especially yeah. when the NBA to a, a damn near every team has an all star or a good, at least at the minimum, a good point guard. That's tough. Yeah, that's why I say he he probably won't star because, oh, my goodness. It's a lot <laughs> Dane, of people that's out there. You're going to put Carly Jones. Well, look at this week. You got to play Dane. You got to play Steph. You got to play. Uh, the kid from Portland just got drafted. You got Washington coming up with uh, Jordan uh, Poole. Jordan Poole finna go absolutely nuts this season, bro. Facts. <laughs> Facts. But uh, that's it from us today, y'all, man. We ain't got nothing else to say. See, Doug, get the people your final thoughts, bro. Hey, man, shout out to Garlic, man. I might go eat me a pizza after this shit. This man, garlic. funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, but. Just to end it off, man, y'all, hey, just want to continue to thank y'all for supporting the channel. Make sure y'all hit the like button and subscribe here for all your Bulls content. The season is edging closer and closer. We will have live calls. We will continue to do mailbags. We will continue to do daily episodes, contents, and YouTube shorts. And we locked in. We ready to go. So y'all make sure y'all lock in by hitting that notification bell twice to lock in with us. That voicemail number is 773-242-9219 if you want to call in. It's another episode of Shy Boys Podcast. I'm Bobby with c Dub. We're going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. Come on, yeah. Gang. Yeah.